we would tend to think that the command module was orbiting the moon this way, that is parallel to the lunar surface, because this is the way we used to see a rocket orbit a planet on cartoons. This photo of S1137-5445 has been taken in Apollo 11 from the lunar module and shows the command module orbiting the moon along with the lunar module. Indeed after the lunar module has separated from the command module it does not immediately start its descent to the lunar surface, but first orbits the moon close to the command module for some time. The command module is not oriented horizontally like we would expect but vertical instead. This photo of S113754447 has also been taken in Apollo 11. On it we also see the command module vertically oriented with its nose up, but much lower than the lunar module. Why does it need to be so much lower than the lunar module? We can also see the command module orbit the moon with a vertical latitude, and with its nose up, on some videos, like on this video taken from the lunar module in Apollo 15. On this excerpt of video we see the lunar surface alternately pass fast and slowly, which means that the command module will change its orbital speed in a very important way, which is totally impossible. The orbital speed is determined by the planet's gravity and the distance of the spaceship to the planet, and it can't change, otherwise the spaceship would leave its orbit. But is this the only hint given in this video? Is the fact that the command module is seen orbiting in a vertical attitude also a hint of the fakery? Should a command module orbit the moon in a horizontal position like cartoons usually show it to us? If the lunar attraction was constant and the centrifugal force only was varying, because the part closer to the moon has a greater angular speed than the one farther from it, the difference of centrifugal forces would force the command module to take a horizontal attitude when it starts from an attitude in bias. But the lunar attraction also varies with the distance to the moon, and it varies even more than the centrifugal force for it varies with the inverse of the square of the distance to the moon's center, while the centrifugal force only varies with the simple inverse of this distance. That's why the closer to the lunar surface you are, and the greater the orbital speed which is necessary to stay in orbit. Consequently when the command module is in bias, the lower part has a gravitational force which is a little greater than the centrifugal force while the upper part has a gravitational force which is conversely a little smaller than the centrifugal force, and this tends to make the command module take a vertical attitude instead. So, if the attitude of the command module is not controlled it naturally tends to become vertical so that the center of mass of the spaceship and its geometric center are vertically aligned, and the center of mass is under the geometric center. We even have a famous satellite that everybody can see, which has an almost constant attitude relatively to us, which varies a little with the libration, it is the moon. If the moon always shows us the same side and never shows us its hidden side, it would be because the side we see is a little heavier than the side which is hidden to us, which makes that its center of mass does not exactly coincide with its geometric center but is distant of some kilometers from it, and closer to us. Though it tends to become rare with the progress of technology, some smaller satellites don't benefit of an attitude control, and use the gravity gradient to orient themselves relatively to the Earth. The natural attitude corresponding to the repartition of mass of the satellite varies a little, but it remains good enough for the use of uncontrolled small satellites. 
some smaller satellites are able to correct their attitude by changing their repartition of mass by moving a weight inside them. Some smaller satellites also use magnetic attitude control. They use the magnetic field of the Earth. But unlike the mass attitude control, which also works for a satellite orbiting the moon, the magnetic attitude control does not work for a satellite orbiting the moon for the moon has no magnetic field. In what concerns bigger satellites they need to have an attitude better controlled than the one corresponding to the natural repartition of mass. The latter does not exactly correspond with the desired attitude and for the more. It varies more than the precision which is desired for the satellite. In that case the satellite needs to continuously correct its attitude so it always coincides with the desired attitude as close as possible. A such satellite uses device which can perpetually work, for it uses little energy. This device is a reaction wheel, or momentum wheel which is still more precise, which is able to make the satellite turn. And, for the energy which is needed to control the reaction wheel, the satellite uses an energy which is infinite for it is solar energy. This schema shows how the loop of the attitude controller works. The current angles and accelerations of the satellite are read by gyroscopes and accelerometers. From these measures, and the current position of the satellite, the satellite's computer updates the current attitude of the satellite. This current attitude is compared with the desired attitude and from the difference of this comparison, commands are elaborated to make the reaction wheels of the satellite correct the attitude of the satellite. So, to make it closer to the desired attitude and so on. You may wonder how the gyroscopes could be initialized, as there was no astronaut on them to make the alignment. In fact the initialization of the gyroscopes is fairly simple. A signal is emitted from Earth, and the satellite is turned in both directions till the reception of the signal is optimal. The corresponding position is then used to initialize the zero of the gyroscopes. So now that we know that it is normal that the command module takes a vertical attitude to orbit the moon, the question is to know whether it should orbit with its nose up or its nose down. It is absolutely obvious that the nozzle of the service module's engine was lighter than the rest of the command module. This fact would place the center of mass of the command module above its geometric center when it is oriented up. But we have seen that the center of mass must be under the geometric center when the command module orbits the moon. This means that the command module should be oriented down instead when it orbits the moon, so that its center of mass is under its geometric center, like it must be when the command module orbits the moon. It means that instead of orbiting the moon this way with its nose up, The command module should orbit the moon this way instead, with its nose down. So, on this photo, and on the videos, taken from the lunar module, showing the command module orbiting the moon, the hint is not that the command module should be horizontal, but that it should be oriented the other way, with its nose down instead of up. We should see the nozzle of the service module's engine, and not the coin of the command module.